Hello and welcome to the first lesson of our module about Tocharian syntax. In this video you will get an overview of syntactic features of Tocharian. This part of the course requires some basic knowledge about the morphological categories of Tocharian which are found in another video. So, first we will have a look at the word classes or the parts of speech of Tocharian. And first we, we begin with the open classes. We have nouns and verbs, and they are heavily synthetic, which means that there is a rich amount of forms. Uh, we have adjectives that are inflected, but there is also a large group that is uninflected, which blurs the boundaries between adverbs and adjectives. The adverbs have no specific marking. If we move over to the closed classes, we have demonstrative pronouns, and we have personal pronouns, and the specific thing about personal pro pronouns is that they also have a set of uh, clitic forms that are important in, in grammar or alignment. And uh, postpositions uh, is, uh, most are most frequent, but also uh, prepositions do occur. And we have verbal particles, uh, particles and auxiliaries, but they are not very frequent because Tocharian is a, a heavily synthetic language. So, uh, Tocharian has a number of specific features of the typology which are different from most other ancient Indo-European languages. In other aspects, Tocharian is similar to other ancient languages. So, uh, it's basically left branching or head final. Uh, there is a distinction between human and non-human in the agent-patient marking. Uh, the nominal paradigm is mixed synthetic agglutinative. There is group inflection and lack of concordance of head and modifier in noun phrases. And they also have case inflected adpositions and adverbials. So, first we will begin by looking at nominal structure. And we will start with linearization. And in principle, the word or constituent order of Tocharian is free, and this includes also the order of words in phrases. And in particular, in metric texts, there is a large amount of variation. However, it is possible to establish, uh, establish a fixed or ca uh, canonical or normal word order. And if we begin with phrases, we have an order, which is quantifier, uh, adjective and noun. And uh, we see that here in this example. Aliakem uh, prashtam and then alak sam pekant. So, um, for agreement in noun phrases, adjectives do agree, but only in primary cases and only by inflected adjectives. Uh, and remember I said before that there is a large group of adjectives that are uh, not inflected, the so-called uninflected adjectives. So uh, let's see, look at the examples here. We have the, uh, the wooden mechanical girl. This is a phrase, of course, all of this. And we have the oblique singular feminine, and we have the oblique singular feminine here. And uh, we have this wooden girl, which is another um, uh, phrase. And you see here, it's uh, an inflected adjective. Moving over to gender. There is gender distinction in nouns as well as in adjectives. And it's base, the basic system has masculine and feminine, two genders. Uh, in the demonstrative pronouns, we have a three gender distinction, uh, which is masculine, feminine and neuter. Gender is detectable basically by adjective agreement uh, in case of inflected adjectives. So again, a large group of adjectives are uninflected. The gender assignment is semantic, for instance, by sexes or morphological for instance, by the stem finals. And uh, there is a specific group called the genus alternans, and uh, it agrees with the masculine in singular and with the feminine in plural. And this is a group that corresponds to the historical or Indo-European neuters. Now let's move over to a uh, number. And uh, we have some very interesting and specific and peculiar things about Tocharian here. So first we have a dual. The dual is used basically for occasional pairs. Why? 
because we have also another uh, number, the so-called paral, and it's used for natural pairs such as feet, uh, ears, knees, uh, knees, sorry, and uh, also um, uh, stable pairs such as uh, a pair of oxen or uh, he, like here, nachtenje, nachtenje, the divine couple. Then we have a very specific and special uh, uh, number of tocharian, and that's the plurative. It's restricted to tocharian B, and it's used to individualize parts of a collective. So we have a very nice example here. Uh, it's about monks that are supposed to move out into many different houses. And you see here, we have house in the oblique plural, and then here we have the plurative, and then we have the locative. So here it's the, the plural, and here is the plurative, it's individualizing the plural. And then we have the locative, which means that it's into each and every one. So, special features of the case. Uh, there is um, a difference between primary and secondary cases, which is very important. And in the morphology lesson, you have seen what the case system looks like. So, the difference between primary and secondary cases is important. As I said, it's uh, visible in agreement, as well as in the functions. And basically, core functions uh, are expressed by primary cases, whereas non-core uh, functions are expressed by secondary cases. And uh, an interesting thing is also that secondary affixes are more independent. And this is, for instance, visible in the Tocharian B stress. So we have here the word yakve, which means horse. And then in the genitive, which is a primary case, remember, it's jakwentse, whereas in perlative singular, you see here, it's yakwesa, so the stress is on the root, indicating that the suffix here, or case affix, is more free than bound. Uh, in the ablative, we have both uh, possibilities. So we have, for instance, lökle mem, uh, where it is uh, like a, a primary case, like the genitive, or we have the more frequent form lökle mem, where the case affix is more free. Uh, another special feature of tocharian is group inflection. And it means that secondary cases normally appear only once at the end of noun phrases. And we have a very nice example here from the Maitya Summit in Nataka, where we have chariots, oblique plural, horses, oblique plural, elephants, oblique plural, and see here, the instrumental, it uh, occur, occurs only once at the end of the phrase, so it's for all this phrase uh, here. So, um, another thing, which is also very peculiar, is that secondary cases can be split, which means that the genitive or the possessive of a noun phrase is inserted between the oblique noun and the affix. Now, this use is restricted. First, it's found only in Tocharian B, and it's also a bit formalized to uh, uh, time uh, expressions or time notions. But here we have an example. So, um, on the fifth day of the eighth month, so you see here is the month, and it's in genitive singular. But here is the locative. So it says oxante pish nye, and then menatse is in between the affix and the noun. So let's very quickly uh, look at case functions. First, we have the nominative. And the nominative, uh, the main function of the nominative is like in other Indian languages, it marks the subject or the agent. Uh, the oblique marks the direct object. But the oblique also has some non-core uh, functions, and it means that it is used uh, to express uh, spatial and temporal 
uh, notions such as the direction, the extension, and the distribution. Uh, now, these non-core functions of the oblique, they are actually restricted, which means that they occur with specific verbs. We have the genitive. The genitive is very important because it covers both the genitive as well as the dative. It, so first, it's, uh, we have the dative functions here. And it is the function of indirect object, like a normal dative. Also the indirect subject, like in non-canonical case marking constructions. And then it's used for agent in passive constructions. Then we have uh, the normal genitive functions, which is the possessive genitive, the subjective genitive, and the objective genitive. And it's also used uh, with the verb persk to fear, which is a, a dative-like function. Now, uh, if we move over to the secondary cases, we have first the perlative. It, has, uh, the, it can be used as uh, agent in passive constructions, that we'll see later on, too. And it has uh, many interesting non-core functions. It marks perlative, which is like movement over something, on top of something, and uh, so forth. And then it, uh, it marks allative, which means that you move up to something. Adhesive, you are, for instance, sitting on a horse or sitting on top of something, on a throne. throne. Then it's the perlative. It marks extension in time, which means that it is a time period without limits at the beginning and at the end. And uh, instrumental and also causal or the cause of something, uh, as well as modal. The, uh, the modal function. The locative marks uh, locative and innocent, so it's real uh, um, local functions. It's when you are located, located at a specific spot, then you use the locative. Uh, so there is an interesting difference here between the perlative and the locative. And it also marks innocent, like if you're inside of a house or inside of a cave or anything like that. If you move into a house or into a cave, you also use the locative. It's the illative function. And it marks uh, time. Uh, but you see the difference here. It's extension and limitation. So if you go at a specific, um, a specific time, uh, so it's more perfective, the, the locative use, at a specific time or a time frame, which is delimited, like within one day, then you use the locative. Otherwise, if there is no real boundary between the be at the beginning and the end, you use the perlative. The allative um, is uh, a bit more restricted in its use. It's uh, basically used for, for uh, local functions, so it marks uh, direction, but it's movement towards something in contrast to the locative and the perlative. The ablative marks uh, departure in, uh, in, uh, in its local use, and it also marks departure in time. Then we have the commutative, and the commutative is used when you uh, go together with someone, so it's, it's quite restricted. And the instrumental is found uh, only in Tocharian uh, A, and it marks instrumental. And then we have the causal, and it's found only in Tocharian B, and it marks uh, the cause of something. So, um, uh, let's move over to referentiality. And Tocharian is similar to most of the Indo-European languages in that it does not have definite markers. However, indefiniteness can be marked and uh, it's, used by the, it's done by the indefinite pronoun ksa. So, we'll now finally uh, look at uh, the text of the mechanical doll that we have looked at a little before. And we will um, consider specifically the usages of the case system here. So let's start uh, at, the, at the beginning here. So in the first phrase, just at another time, you see here, it has the locative. And it means that at a specific uh, occasion, um, this other painter, he went uh, as a guest to the house of a mechanic. And you see here, they use the perlative, which is interesting. It means that he is on his way, he goes to the house, but he didn't enter the house specifically. Now, 
Uh, and then it says thereupon this mechanic um, in all ways he did uh, he he did um, in all ways he did in all manners he did honor and you see here we have the perlative so it's more like a like an instrumental or causal use and then we have the uh, the adverbial, the time notion for the night, and it's it's a uh, it's actually an oblique case. So uh, separately, here in the house, which is interesting because here you see he made a bed in the house. Now the painter has entered the house, and, uh, and the mechanic makes a bed for him in the house. So they use the locative, and. Um, and then also, from his head, he make he makes it down. It's a it's a it's a causative use. So he he put a mechanical doll from his head. You see here the ablative. That's interesting because it means that is um, he did put a mechanical doll at the head of the bed, but it's. Um, it's an ablative because it means away from the bed of the painter. And it was a, a wooden mechanical girl. And he did it with sesame oil. And with a commutative. And then we see here uh, on the slide uh, that we have the verb, uh, which is here. And it says, she did service, which is the mechanical doll, and to him with reverence, and like with reverence. And then here you see the perlative in instrumental use, with beauty, and ceasing, and it's all as if, ceasing by the hand. So when you seize someone by the hand, you use the locative. And again, we have an instrumental use of the perlative in, in a manner like that. So thank you for watching this clip about the Carian syntax. In our next lesson, we will continue with alignment, tense and aspect.